All right, and we're back for another episode of the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. Gerald Glassford coming right back at you here from Lakers Fast Break. Pop Culture Cosmos, Inside Force Fantasy Football, and Game Source. We truly appreciate everyone out there listening to all of our great shows. And if you can, please give us that five star review on Apple Podcasts. Plus, if you can like, share, subscribe, follow, or do anything that you can to support us here at the Lakers Fast Break. It is truly appreciated. Plus, also as well, if you can support our friends at Lakerholics.com and also ThriveFantasy.com or Thrive Fantasy on your mobile app where you can go ahead and be part of the action today when it comes to daily fantasy sports betting and player props on the NBA, NFL, right in playoff crunch time, and also as well upcoming Major League Baseball, PGA, and also as well eSports. Just go ahead on your first deposit, type in the code LFB. It lets them know that you're getting this info from us here at the Lakers Fast Break. Plus, when you make your first deposit and put in the code LFB, you can go ahead and get a matching from Thrive Fantasy, dollar for dollar, up to $50, as long as you put in $20 or more on your first deposit from our friends at Thrive Fantasy. Well, what do you know? A trip to Houston has done the Lakers some good with one of their best performances so far overall during the course of the season so far, especially in the first half. I cannot say enough good things about how well they played in the first half. Just a very well-rounded game as far as first half. Took their foot off the pedal in the third quarter, but decided to go ahead and put it back on again for the fourth quarter and closed out very strong, giving some LeBron and AD a little bit of rest. But they went ahead and won pretty handily today, 120 to 102. And here today to talk about the game. And I'll tell you what, he's a happy camper indeed. And while I drink this chocolate milk, no, I'm not going to make this a tradition because chocolate milk is harder to get right now in the middle of a pandemic. So it's not always easy for me. So I can't do that as a tradition. But while I drink this chocolate milk and share this out to the rest of the world, it is my good friend indeed. He is the mastermind behind Lakerholics.com and also his great site at medium.com. I know him as Tom Wong, but you know him as Laker Tom. And Laker Tom, this is going to really taste good because this is a game that they should have played on Friday. Yep. Boy, it was good to see Anthony Davis come back and have a bounce back game exactly like we wanted him to have. I know, right? LeBron is his usual stellar self. and the third best scorer on the team, game ball to Horton. Uh, Taylor Taylor Horton Tucker, Tucker. who really had had a terrific game. Um, He did. Yes, he did. Played great defense. Uh, Had several steals, uh, 17 points. It was was really fun to watch him play. And the kid has got, he's got great court vision for uh, when you think that this guy is just 19 years old or 20 years old, just turned 20. Boy, he, he adds a lot of depth to the Lakers. 10-man rotation, and uh, it's going to be hard to keep him from getting more minutes the way he's been playing. So it was uh, it was a performance that we'd like to see every night. Right, Gerald? Absolutely. I mean, when you look at his stats so far, uh, he's 20. He's barely what you – I mean, you can almost consider him a rookie as far as being on the NBA floor. Younger than 44 guys drafted this year. Exactly. So, I mean, when you look at it on the interim, I mean, 42% – from the from the field and 31 from the line, you can go ahead and rip him on that. But we knew it was a growth process. He just needs time. He just needs minutes. And I always said, Tom, if he gets it ever above 35 from the three-point area, it opens up so many things for him. And today he was shooting very well, playing good defense that kept him on the floor. And that's primarily the reason why he got the minutes is because he played outstanding defense. Alex Caruso, and you won't see it on the box store, also played very good minutes as well. Three steals on the defensive end. It was a much more concerted effort on the defensive end. And that's what I really like to see. It helps us, helps with the transition, helps when you get those turnovers. The Lakers like to run and they got a chance to do so today. And I was really happy to see that. Well, it was good to see them get a lot of blocks. I mean, they blocked eight shots today. Yes. Um, and uh, three of them by, half, three think, by right? AD. Uh, two of them, two of them by uh, uh, Talon didn't get any blocks, but he had had four he had four steals, and you know it was just a 
a good all-around performance. It was fun watching uh, AD go against Christian Wood, who obviously is a fan favorite uh, of, of you and I. Yeah, and, and I don't uh, want to, well, hold on a second. I want to just say this. Sean Grice, I know you saw this on the email, said, you know, oh, he totally uh, outplayed Christian Wood tonight. But the thing is, Tom, how much more is AD paid than Christian Wood? Right. How much more thought of is AD and Christian Wood? He should always play better than Christian Wood. It's when Christian Woods plays at that level, that's a surprise. That's what you see in him. You and I see that now in Christian Wood, but AD should always play at this level. Yeah. Well, he he, he outplayed him. He basically outscored him for the whole game in the first yeah. half. Had a terrific first half. Uh, I think he went nine for nine before he finally missed a mid-range jumper. Trez also had a terrific game. Yes. Trez was just punishing him down low. That's two games in a row. It is. It is. And, uh, you know, Dennis Dennis had a little slow start as he's had the last two or three games, but he came on at the end, uh, played very well. Caruso's defense on Harden was excellent all the, all the game long. Um, so this is the kind of game that you really want, where the Lakers basically were able to coast for most of the second half and and uh, were able to basically take it easy, turn it on when they needed to, and uh, every time they put their foot on the gas, the car went forward. Yes. So it's uh, it's a great win. It'll be interesting to see what adjustments uh, Houston makes for the for the next game. We play them in this back to back situation again. It was kind of an odd thing. I thought they should have thrown Boogie out at the same time because he retaliated for that shove. That uh, I don't know what what Morris set Morris off that he that he uh, knocked that guy out of bounds. Yeah, let's just, I want to give everybody, listeners and watchers, head up since it wasn't a game that was shown nationally. It was only shown on Spectrum, or if you have NBA League Pass, there was a situation where Markeith Morris was thrown out of the game after a heavy shot by DeMarcus Cousins, which is kind of funny because DeMarcus Cousins was on the Lakers last year, and obviously it was something in the heat of the moment, but they did go after each other. Markeith was thrown out of the game, and then shortly thereafter, Cousins went after LeBron on a swipe on a block, but it was right. not very a, didn't intentionally try to hurt him. It was just no, no, but still there. close enough to going the for runner. the ball, but he hit his head. <laughs> yeah, so clo- it was close enough to say, you know what? I think it's yeah. time for him to go. So he was ejected from the game. Several technical foul shots were were taken, but again, it was a point where the Lakers stayed focused for three quarters. Let's put it that way. Not the third quarter because they right. kind of took their foot off the pedal. But yeah, twenty-six fr- point lead go down to thirteen or eleven. Yeah, it, it actually was to eleven. It went down to eleven. So and it was just kind of frustrating. But when you get again in the start of that fourth quarter, they turned it on, and it, that's what you want to see from this team. Yeah, it's uh, it, Houston is an interesting team because they when you look at them on paper and you think of. of they have a lot of players who, you know, when you look at Boogie and, and John Wall and, and James Harden, you you expect that they could go off and have a superstar performance. But there's obviously something going on with that roster that it's not clicking, you know. And it's just uh, kind of weird, don't you think? Because yeah, on Harden, paper, Harden is yeah, not. They, Harden yeah, is almost like he's playing to get traded. You know, yeah. he didn't he didn't seem to play with any heart and fire. Uh, he seemed to. Whereas some guys will settle for three pointers, Harden seemed to settle for a, for passing the ball, and that's not the James Harden you're used to seeing. I don't know whether he's he's uh, trying to you know play in the style that Silas wants them to play and and to be more of the point guard, if you will, and distribute the ball. He is leading the league in assists. Yeah, um, but still, he's not. It's not the James Harden that we're so used to having to. To you know, specially defend in this particular situation, it was you know. I mean, most of the time it was it was pretty much one on one. We really didn't we really didn't hedge hard on him. He's still an incredible tricky guy when he gets into the lane with his euro steps and and leaning one way and the other. They didn't he didn't get to the line very much. That was one of the other things too that he he seemed to settle for making plays for his teammates. Um, and they were they were ice cold from outside at the start of the game. Mclemore couldn't buy anything. Christian Wood couldn't hit anything for the whole first three quarters from outside. So, you know, it's it's funny though. They they they've got I think they've got four wins already, which is surprising when you look at how they played tonight. I don't know. You know, well, they're, they're three and five right now. The three, the three and, five. and five. 
Yeah, but the, I, I will say this. When it comes to their roster, you thought they would have done a little bit better because, I mean, Christian Morton Wood getting him. Terrible. Yeah, that, Christian Wood. Really hurting him. But, but Christian Wood coming to the team and Wall and Westbrook, even though you were worried about what, what Wall's status was, he's played well. He's played mm-hmm. almost as well. In fact, he has played as well as Westbrook has on Washington right now. So right. That you can pretty much say that's a wash. You You get Wood in there which was an upgrade to me from Covington on the surface. It seems like the Rockets should be better, but right. they're not. And I think, like you said, it all starts with Harden and him not averaging 30 plus points. He's only, I think scored, he had like a 44 point game, I think early on when he just came right. back. But since then, like you said, he's been focused on distributing focused on maybe not where he needs to be and whether it's where conditioning he be or, or where he right. wants to be, like I said. So yeah. I, I don't know. It just seems like a very puzzling time for Houston Rockets at this point in time. That's fine for me. I, you know, I, well, it's I, fine for us I've, too. Never yeah, been a great, I've never been a, I've never been a great James Harden fan and not so much because of, of him being a ball hog, but I'm just, he's just one of those guys who always seems to have an excuse when you get to the playoffs for what happens. And even at times when he's been high in the MVP candidates, he doesn't seem to perform really well in the late stages of, of the playoffs. Um, and as a result, he's never been elevated in my books at the, the level of Steph or LeBron or or even KD, you know. So it's it, we'll have to see what happens as the year goes on. I find it hard to think that they're not going to trade him at some point in time and that he's going to end up on the 76ers at some point in time, you know. Maybe, maybe not. I, I'm still thinking Denver's got a shot, my friend. As long mm-hmm. as M- Michael Porter Jr. is healthy, there's always him as far as a valuable trade commodity if he doesn't stay with Denver. Mm-hmm. So there, there's always that thought there. But, yeah, I, I agree with you on that. It, it's kind of, you know, I'm watching. I, I For some reason, I just don't, I just don't see his style of play fitting with Denver's style of play. You know, to me, Denver's what makes Denver so good is is having the ball in Nikola's hands. I don't see that working. It just depends on where you have Philadelphia. It does seem like a natural, but in Houston's case, do you take Ben Simmons back, who's such a great defensive individual, playmaking skills, excellent, but can't shoot, and you get to the situation right. where in a playoff series again, yeah, you got him along. You got along with John Wall. You got. Yeah. Two guys who need the ball to really and two guys who can't shoot consistently and can't shoot consistently. It's a tough, tough fit. I don't understand too why Ben is so reluctant to shoot from three. He's not a bad free throw shooter, um, and that's usually you know pretty, pretty good prediction of how a guy can develop as a three point shooter if he's an excellent free throw shooter. I mean, it's one of the things that Kalen Horton Tucker has only missed one free throw this year so far. Mm -hmm. And and he shot, you know, 17 out of 19 in the preseason. And then it's one of the things that really gives me a lot of faith that his his ability, his improvement the last year in the three point shooting is is not going to be a mirage that he really can can hit the stroke the ball. Well, I just wanted Um, to give you a heads up on that. His stats for this season, he is only 60 percent from the free throw line and a career 60 percent free thrower. So he's not as good from the free throw line as you might think. 60%? 60%? How many free throws has he taken? He takes quite a few, I'm assuming, because he drives to the basket all the time because he doesn't take outside shots. Hmm. I don't know. I, 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 I'd I like to look at those stats myself. I'll I mean, he's a career out. 59% free throw shooter, just to give you a heads up. So. Well, a career, that's a career, but in the, in, the, in the G League? Yeah. Are you talking about Ben Simmons, right? No, no, I was talking about Taylor Horton Tucker. Oh, I thought you were talking about Ben Simmons for a while there. My, my apologies. Well, I did. No, with ben actually, Simmons I didn't realize that Ben Simmons was that poor of a three-point shooter. Yeah. Uh, really, THT, that... THT right now is 42% from the field, like I said earlier, 31% from the three-point area before today's game. What's his and free throw percentage? His free throw percentage is is pretty decent right now. So, yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, with him, it's just growing. It's just getting the minutes. I think you need to throw them out there, good or bad, and today was good. And that's the kind of signs that you see going forward from him that you want. And so I'm I'm hopeful for his future with THT. But I was talking still about Ben Simmons and yeah. the James Harden type. Yeah, I, okay. I, I was mistaken then. If Simmons is a 60%, that's not a good sign for a three-point. You know, it's it's guys like that that you look back at, at the players who 
we're all talking about, you know, Russell Westbrook, potential MVP player averaging a triple double and gets a max contract. And he almost becomes one of those guys that can only be traded for another bad max contract. Ergo enters John Wall, another same guy that, you know, teams didn't want to lose him. So they gave him a max contract. And uh, even though he's, he's in many ways, a flawed player, you know, in, in, I don't know what his three point percentage is, but he's not, I don't think he's got a reputation as being a guy who can shoot the three efficiently. And that changes the whole perception of your game. Same with Russell, you know, that, that if you don't have the ability to hit that three, it, it really makes it difficult for you as a guard in the league today. I agree with you on that. This is Raphael from NBA draft junkies.com. And you are listening to the Lakers fast break. Check out what's been going on with the Pop Culture Cosmo Show and the PCC Multiverse. People are just losing their minds trying to consume Marvel products right now, and I don't blame them. This is some of the best entertainment you can get on TV and big screen right now. If something's going to be successful or not, they look at the mentions, they look at the likes, they look at the retweets and the tweets and the subtweets and the tweet tweets, and they look at all of that to say, okay, this is actually going to garner a lot of attention. Is it going to be enough, though? I think the fish out of water syndrome might be enough for somebody like us. Because it's going to be hilarious to watch two stoner kids we saw barely make it through high school now live in a society that they fully don't understand because they've been stuck in a decade and never came out of it. Facebook stars, not ninja stars, okay? I know how some people take things literally. So don't throw ninja stars at us, but like the Facebook stars. Click on those. That's what we want. That's the Pop Culture Cosmo Show. And the PCC Multiverse. Catch our shows on Worldwide Radio seven days a week and wherever you get your podcasts. Again, very, very good victory for the Los Angeles yep. Lakers today. Very happy. Uh, unfortunately, Sean Grice, a.k.a. Magic Man, couldn't be here. He's too busy saving people out of the ice, from what <laughs> I hear. So that guy's doing a great job saving people out of the ice. And then you've got Jamie Sweet has been doing a lot of things, but he's going to be able to hopefully catch up with us later in this week. But before we head on out, my friend, I know you got a lot of great stuff going right now at LakerHawks.com. And you're also your great site at Medium.com. I hope one of them is is how the Lakers have now returned to have the best record in the NBA as it stands right now. Well, I'm st- I'm still in the mode that that we're in this sort of quasi preseason, you know, where I call it the anti bubble. It's it's you know you're it was it was odd watching. I mean, I love the uh, social distancing that the uh, that the Houston Rockets have for their fans because it's like. 50 feet apart from fans, you know, when you saw them in the crowd. And then it was kind of interesting. A lot of the boos, you know, you're not used to hearing that because we're used to hearing the feed of the crowd noises instead of the actual crowd noises. And and tonight, tonight we had actual crowds. And when they'd shoot free throws, you could see the guys in the stands and there'd be two people here. And then 40 feet away, there'd be another two people. I don't know how many fans they allowed in in the arena, um, obviously, it was more than just family and friends like the Lakers and and most of the teams have, and and you know Houston, obviously Texas is like California, like Arizona. It's one of those areas where COVID is just running rampant. Been kind of interesting is we Jamie did a had a great five things at Lakerholics dot com talking about the fact that you know it's five things and basketball isn't one of them was basically the title of his article, and not to become CNN like you always mention, but we're we're seeing so many things in the news that that just basically almost push basketball out of your mind for a good portion of the day and i know that has to weigh some on the players too especially some of the some of the social justice issues that are happening in this country and and how we're dealing with them so it just adds to that whole mystique of 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 a season where you know you've got teams like the 76ers all of a sudden having covid issues and Boston yeah. Celtics got their yeah, the game. Boston Celtics. Today. I mean, you know, you you got their best player out for ten days for contact tracing. I don't know how we can, you know, you just hope that it's going to go through and that that you know, the Lakers are going to somehow keep themselves safe from this. But it's so hard, you know. Los Angeles is just going like crazy. I may have to go down to LA on a business deal later this week, and I've been resisting it left and right, and uh, and yet it it's looking more and more like I may have to go there. And I don't know how you have a COVID safe conference room. 
to have a business deal in in the middle of this situation so it's you know how you do it you know how you do it i remember in like the old spy shows like get smart or even mm-hmm. when it was mocked in in uh you know austin powers where you have the cone of silence you have the cone <laughs> you put through and they they lower it down on you that's the I only way i look that up there are um rectangular plexiglass things that you can get to sit on the conference table well so i'm going to ces this it. week well i'm going to the consumer electronics mm-hmm. show this week virtually because that's the first year that it's happening like that because of all what's going on. But I'm expecting there at least to be some vendors to have to selling this cone of silence to do right. these protective cones like that. I'm, I'm expecting some of them to have that just because of what's going on. But all kidding aside with what's going on with the coronavirus, like you said, Philadelphia has just been terrorized by it, uh, barely unable to field a team yesterday. And there's so much more going on. Boston may not be able to play a game until Friday at the what earliest. Are the, what are the rules that the league has made about when a game is postponed versus when you're forced to play? I I'm, think it's six league. healthy players. You got to have six healthy six players. Healthy players. So if you got six healthy players, you play. Mm-hmm. And then what happens if two guys foul out? The, you remember that that old Laker game from long ago, like ten years ago, with Chris Kamen lying on the bench that one year. I think it was so against Portland. To play, we still have to play five yeah. on four, then, huh? Yeah. So that I know, it's, I know in the youth leagues that I coached in, and we've had that problem many times where you know players foul out and you're playing five. I had a game where I was playing five on three. Yeah. Fortunately, mine was with five, and the other team was with three. The hope three. you won. Pardon? I said I hope you won. Oh yeah, of course. That was an easy <laughs> game. You imagine that on an NBA team, you know? The, yeah. It's uh, it's a five on three break the whole game, but the, and the players you're playing are not exactly the guys that you're yeah. normally yeah. starting yeah. with. So we're I just saw the, uh, I saw the Simmons and Embiid were both out from that seventy six yeah. game. But exactly. they, and, and Dwight Howard was playing point guard. Yeah, so that's why they lost. I mean, you know, not because Dwight Howard, but just because they didn't right. have the yeah. the players that they had to need uh, need to play the game. But one good I'm thing that the Lakers have with a long deep bench, man. Yeah, uh, but I'm hoping they won't have to utilize Hopefully it. They in, won't have to use yeah. it. Yeah, right, exactly right. And I'm I'm hoping for the continued health and safety of the NBA players. I'm, I'm it's going to be a rough week. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm kind of worried of where this week is headed, and then also as well for everyone out there with the numbers of the deaths and numbers for coronavirus out there. I'm really truly hoping for uh, everybody will stay healthy, stay safe. But Laker Tom, you stay healthy, you stay safe. I know you've got some articles coming up this week at LakerHollis.com. I know I've got stuff out there for Pop Culture Cosmos, so please check out our new episodes that are coming on this week. And, of course, we'll have more. If there's more games, which right now they're scheduled to be more games on the docket, I look forward to doing more post games this week with you this week, so I'm looking forward to it. But everybody out there, if you have a question for us, it's at Laker Tom on Twitter at Lakers Fast Break on Twitter or Lakers Fast Break at Yahoo.com. You want to send your comments or, you know what, if you can, share us a five-star review that you made for us at Apple Podcasts. We truly appreciate it if you would, or just support, like, whatever you can do to share anything you can, because we do need to grow our audience. We're looking forward to getting bigger and larger. We have our, actually in the past month, we've had our biggest shows ever, so we cannot thank you enough for supporting us. And we truly cannot thank you enough for that. So hopefully you'll tell more people about the Lakers fast break because we think we're one of the best out there. And we think that everybody that likes us stays with us right here at the Lakers fast break podcast. But Laker Tom was a great victory today all around. A lot of great play from so many players out there. THT did awesome out there. Montrez Harrell, of course, LeBron, AD, with his best game of the year so far, 27 points, uh, just it really just very solid, three block shots. Didn't need to go ahead and touch too much on the rebounding because they're even uh, with a light amount of rebounds, they still out-rebounded the Rockets 39 to 30. So overall, it was a great performance, 50% from the field, still not where they're at, what they once were on the three-point area, but they were still 34, 35%. So we'll take it. We'll take the victory. 120 to 102 over the Houston Rockets. But Laker Tom, it's been fantastic talking to you. I will see you on Tuesday, correct? Right. Okay, that's Tuesday after the game. Please tune in to us. It is the Lakers fast break. We'll be back on Tuesday post game right here 
at the Lakers Fast Break Podcast.